And you're just in time for your most comprehensive coverage on matters business and public policy in Kenya with me, Richard Mwanja. This is Business Glide, a show that we always say we hope will have an impact on the future of Kenya's economy. And it is worth to note that this is the second part, actually a continuation of our coverage on some key dockets in Ruto's administration that continue to experience some systemic failures they are in and how best they can be fixed, such bottlenecks, today, if not yesterday. With me is none other than the public scholar himself who is going to help me delve into this subject. The first of his name, the gentleman that continues to age like fine, South African wine, Haman <laughs> Bon Manyora. Yes. Great to see you, sir. Yes. I'm What's the sure. secret? You continue well, sparkling and glowing all the day. Just loving your God. Which God is this? Yeah, some God, whatever you be believe him to be. Ah. And doing the right things and loving humanity. I see. And being at peace with yourself and never wanting to be a billionaire. Or a especially politician from in Kenya. stealing. Yeah. Just be content with who you are. All right, so let's delve through, I mean, uh, into today's conversation. We are looking at some of the crucial dockets that are going to have some uh, quite huge impact in the welfare of many Kenyans. And therein is the energy sector. Of course, the nominee for that docket is none other than Davis Chichir, the former chief of staff at uh, DP's office, now the president. He is tasked with actually delivering elect cheap electricity and fuel for many Kenyans. You've seen our president go to Tanzania, made some commitments there in on bringing cheap gas into the region. But when it comes to matters electricity, we've seen a task force being prepared to look at the power purchase agreements. Months into it, the cost of electricity is still high. We're going to have matters to do with dead stock in the electricity sector. Let's start from there. Procurement is done, but it seems that under the Kenya power and electricity sector, that is now the real cash cow when, when it comes to matters procurement. How different can it be done this time round? When you hear people telling you they are forming a commission over things that are straightforward, they have no intention of solving them. When you hear President Ruto has set up a task force on education, mm -hmm. he doesn't want to solve the issue of CBC. These are people considered things. Just cutting it around it. Come because on. if you are the president, just say this CPC is nonsense, this CBC is nonsense. And I want experts to tell me in two weeks how we go back where we are supposed to be. Two weeks. There were chief economists there so, who advised. Uh, so even with electricity, that but uh, Kenya Kwanza talked of state capture. Mm -hmm. But where do you find state, state capture more than in uh, the corruption more than any sector? Don't you think that Davis? You don't need to set a commission to, to sort out the mess in Kenya power in, in the in the energy sector. You just call people in your in state house or your office and you tell them that in three days I want this thing done. But Ruto seems committed towards delivering such cheap fuel. You've seen David Chichir make a comeback in the sector, not any other docket, energy. Don't you think that inspires I'm, confidence I'm in Manyora? Sure. I'm not sure he, has, he had such a sterling performance. I'm not even sure he left it under very good circumstances. So, <laughs> they came But it's not even a question of an individual. I have always said, uh -huh. it's, it's really a question of the individual. Mm -hmm. Of course, I vouch for the best we can afford in every sector, mm -hmm. for every job, every task. But I'm also not blind to the fact that um, the fact that uh, it must be the man at the top. The will to fight corruption must start from the top. The current man at the top was mm -hmm. at the time the DP when they launched the last mile connectivity program. Yes, yes. They which are was, committed to which was which was the home of corruption. Come on, and yeah, that's where we bought all these fake. Transformers. But there in came some good tidings in addressing climate change. We saw the ban on timber post. They went for the cement ones. But that, is, that was business. You mean? Yes. How about now? So long as we uh -huh. use the government to make money, this country will never grow. That was just business for people, and we know the people. Record That's why you don't uh -huh. need a commission. If you wanted to use electricity, you look for some semi-arid land somewhere and ask Kenya Power to reclaim the land, one million acres, and plant the trees, they will never buy a single post. Just after a short 10 years or so, they will never then buy just a million acres. This country has so much land. So my Kenya Power, with the Ministry in charge of environment and forestry and so on and so forth, and carefree researchers, we need purchase of 50,000 acres, 30, 000, totaling 1.5 million acres mm -hmm. in places which today cannot hold good farming. But we can redirect water 
in some basin, dry basins, mm -hmm. where water just flows using gravity, and then the trees grow. And in seven years, Kenya Power will never buy one single point. So it is not about wanting to make electricity affordable. Mm -hmm. It is an opportunity for people to make money. I see. Yeah. Because what, what ails the energy sector? Mm -hmm. Do I even need to, to, to get out of my bed to put it down? Everybody knows the problem. There, Ian, we've seen it's in the public domain. Records are there. The Office of the Auditor General has audited energy sector and agencies therein, such as Kenya Power. They've come out with damning reports on dead stock therein, amounting to billions of shillings. Now, this time round, the same docket will be channeled a billion of shillings. Don't you think it's high time first we address the dead stock issue before you go into another set of procurement? Because that hasn't been factored in their, I mean, in, in their plans. This How month. will you deal with that when people are still want to make money? So it must be at the top. The president must show the country <laughs> he has a will to fight corruption in the country <laughs> and say corruption in this country will be a thing of the past. And everybody will take you and fall suit. I see. The kind of theft that goes on in this country, in any sector, is just raw, crude, cheap <laughs> theft. And you can arrest everybody one morning and prosecute all of them in the afternoon and all of them go to committee and other prisons in, in, the, in the evening. Let's move on swiftly with this coverage. In there also has come the, the docket of spots yes. to be charged under Babu Namobashul. The government actually gave him the, the green light, the parliament. Yes. We've seen hundreds of thousands of Kenyans who are talented, but they are unemployed. And that is one conduit of getting these people employed. But they are always fearful of they get to practice, then Rio's saga comes back. It comes to the time for Olympics, millions are splashed there in, and any other set of, you've seen what's happening at the Kenya Football Federation. Corruption and graft even comes to matters talent and manipulating the young souls who want to reap an income from transparent ways. For Babu Namwamba, where does it start? Do you form committees, caretaker committees, like mm. the one in football? <laughs> or do you start with facing out people like Nick Mwendo, who, was, who is going to make a comeback? Where does it start? The revolution on matters talent. I wish we were dealing with corruption <laughs> only. But we are dealing with mediocrity, with mm -hmm. stupidity and cheapness. Mm -hmm. Again, it goes back to state house. And one day, one day, mm -hmm. a man or woman will walk to state house as the president of this country. Mm -hmm. And people remember the things Manyora used to say. One day, just one man or woman, state house, everything will change. So don't ask me what Ababa will do, because he will do nothing. Don't you think he is vicious? If you are the president of the Republic of Kenya and say, uh -huh. I want Kenya to be a sporting nation. Can we match our account? That's enough. I want Kenya to be a sporting nation. The minister, together with your team, bring the report to me in, in, in 30 days. I want sports tourism in this country. I want sports tourism to make more money than all the money we get from tourism in this country. We have tried with Kipchoge classics. I mean, the comeback of the safari rally. We want, we want, we want lake, lake sporting. Skating and all that. Yes. You know, this country is dying, it's suffocating under cheapness. Come on. No thinking. But it, nobody will think. The president must send this mm -hmm. message mm -hmm. that mediocrity will be a thing of the past. I will only work with people capable of thinking mm -hmm. so that if you are in a room with experts or ministers, mm -hmm. cabinet meeting, fire is in that cabinet meeting. Would you recommend now? When you want to talk about it, when you are admitted, they are not capable of that thinking. Mm -hmm. The level of thinking of a cabinet paper you table, your colleagues stay it down until you resign. They tell you, please, they tell the minister, the president, mm -hmm. there will be no point of us coming here for cabinet meetings if these are the people who are going to be sharing this table with us. But in addressing such issues, don't you think the caretaker committee, like that one for football, is going to care? Leave? You don't need a caretaker committee for football. <laughs> when I was growing up, when I was in school, football was organized from the lowest level, the school level, mm -hmm. 
the sublocation level, then we created things that were called zones, mm -hmm. athletics and competition started from the school to the nearing schools. Mm -hmm. It was done even by evening football. There was there, young people, mm -hmm. you know, coping up to the old gossage, you know, you know. So people go up, location, mm -hmm. competition at the location, the location then forms a team mm -hmm. and the locations compete at the division. And they form teams and they compete at the district level. And then they form teams, they compete at the provincial level, then the national level. And the government was taking sports seriously. There was study across the country. Her Mrs. Stadium was there. When there's football at Wazima, nobody can be in the house. People are watching that football. Schools are competing and they are co tournaments with the, with the cups and the shields and Government under through the Kenya School Equipment Scheme letter, they are providing with balls, with the nets for. You don't need to form a committee. You just resurrect that thing from the grassroots. Mm -hmm. You see, where football works well, you it is organized from school level to regional level and the national level and the competitions. And the, you know, it is surprising. I was doing some research. That's south of this place. There isn't a university with a. With, with, I think there was only one university with an Olympic sized foot swimming pool. It cannot even cost 20 million shillings. A swimming pool in universities. I was shocked when I was doing a research. The ministry is getting billions. So, then how can the Kenya even compete in swimming? All schools are supposed to have swimming pools for recreation, yeah. and then for talent search. And you'll find if you had swimming pools, let us say at least, at least every sub county, there are two, three schools with swimming pools. Then they are shared co communally, and with other schools, you don't have, you know, you slot a day for this school and as we continue expanding. In 10 years, Kenya will win some medal in swimming. Diverse fine sports? Yeah. So, what are you talking about, committees and Ababu Namamba? There's nothing they will do, it's just rubbish. Let's go to the main yes. class in the sector. These are now the talented youth who yes. call them, them hustlers. Yes. We've seen our one-time silver medalist wrote in poverty. Yes. There's those who won gold for Kenyan. You've seen them come yes. and beg for harambes yes. on social media. They're in. Mental issue is such a big thing yes. for the talented youths in there. Because of the frustration they get from the bosses and their managers. We've seen the case of rogue agents. They're in. An athlete gets millions out there in the Berlin Marathon. What trickles into a young man account. of 19 years. Yes. What trickles into the account is barely peanuts. We've seen this thing happen in the daylight. We've even got people like Kipchoge. Too. When Americans earn their money outside, the government will ensure nobody robs them through rogue, crookish taxation measures. Under the name of agents? So we, mm -hmm. when other countries are protecting their sportsmen and women, mm -hmm. so that where they earn the money, the money is not overtaxed. Mm -hmm. It must con conform to American taxation. Mm -hmm. We, it is our own government that is overtaxing our own sportsmen. <laughs> they come have, the you, have you ever imagined a Kenyan can choose to go and run for another country? It's all over the place. Give the honor and glory to that other country. We've seen some go for Uganda. Ca ca can, can you, can, the first time I heard about it, I thought I was dreaming. I thought I was dreaming. In other countries, a sportsman who brings gold is almost a god. In Russia, an artist is a god. With the retirement package in there. Yeah. Once he exits the state. Because anything that brings pride to a people mm -hmm. must be jealously protected and guarded. When that national anthem is being sung, I feel like crying. Tears roll in my eyes. Keep choking. Ding, 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 ding. You feel it. <laughs> The pride of the nation. What is it we can't give to get those, those songs sung during the Olympics? The, the, our national anthem. What is it? What sacrifice can we make? So you are telling me about Namwamba and the sports. This, we, we are just useless people. That you, you, imagine that one day in your lifetime. Kenya is lifting the World Cup like this. What, would you, what will go on through you? Investments. How many investments? Kenyans will cry? How many will shed tears? That Kenya here, World Cup, they are bringing it home. Is it that we are content with Kipchoge? 
We, we are like just useless people. All right. There are people who run barefoot. I see them. Children in schools when there are small cheap competitions. You can see a boy or a girl. I saw some in my school when I was a youth. I said, this is talent. Somebody has to... Other countries nurture their talent. And those talents bring glory to the country. Bring inspiration to other young people. <laughs> and also bring money to the country. Foreign investments. Yes. And all that. Bring money. I see. So, but the bottom line is, are we capable of big thinking? It's all about diversifying sports, you say. It's about thinking, not diversifying sports. Everything will come from big, big thinking. This country requires big thinking. Big, I'm telling you, cabinet. How 90% of the people Ruto has nominated cannot be in a cabinet when I'm sitting there. Hold that thought because you said in 2025 you're going to give Ruto a, man, I mean, a run for his money. Let's move swiftly. This is now the, uh, more of uh, the spine of the economy. That's the National Treasury and Planning Docket. Yes. Therein is a potential nominee. You've seen Professor Ndugu come on board. Kenyans still grapple with the issue of, I mean, access to information. We have seen information asymmetry when it comes to how much they know about the public-private partnership. They are in talk of the SGR. We are now seeing Kenya go, get into partnership with, with, with Tanzania on the gas issue they are in. How good will it be, or how subtle is it, for Kenyans to be aware of the information on their taxes? How much has been spent on a certain project? And whether do you think Ruto's government will be open to such information going to the public? I've said many times <laughs> that any time you see a project anywhere, even in a school, <laughs> if you see a principal constructing a gate, it's not because they need the gate. Because his son in a private school, maybe in the UK, fees has gone down. So if he does the stone wall around the school, he'll get fees to send his daughter to drink in the US. Come on. Yeah, that's what it is. So. Many of the projects that are undertaken in this country, they're not undertaken because we need them. They're undertaken because those are cash cows. Those are things through which people can eat, mm -hmm. siphon uh, our resources. So how can such a thing be done in a transparent manner? How? So you have to limit information that is accessible so today? It's natural. They go hand in hand. You cannot give information over a deal that was intend intended to be a cash cow. How? But they are in. How about if you address the issue of developing a, a, a policy on safeguarding whistle, whistleblowers in Kenya? We see in Parastatal are still rigid to accept in whistleblowers. People who have the best of their you, countries. How would you make it possible for whistleblowers to, to operate? How would you make it possible to run a witness protection unit? Mm -hmm. Then it means people not steal. And those people who steal, who you are relying on, to create the environment conducive to whistleblowers, how can they do it? They will not do it. Is it that manure you don't have hope in your country? I have a lot of hope. Nobody has hope and love more than me. I'm just critical. Still about. I see a lot of potential we have, but we are not using the potential because I know there are Kenyans. There may not be many, but there are people who love this country. There are people who are intelligent. Today, 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 I sat with a man. Engineer Kalamba or something like that. Oh, mm -hmm. God. If you listen to that man, you... F I think that. I was surprised. He told us. He has a project, I don't know, in Ikisi. That this thing uh, women are buying in this country calling human air. It is made from banana fiber. What? They are being lied to the natural human hair. He has started the project. He has wonderful ideas in many areas. An engineer Kalamba or something like that. Yeah. I met him today. And I'm telling you. There are men like him. There are brilliant young Kenyans with brilliant ideas. All that the government needs to do is to give them space. Mm -hmm. Is to create an environment conducive for them to think and innovate. But when you have this half-empty fellows you want to make ministers, how can that, how could these people be going, those are ministers whose work was to make our nails and and here in the office the, the whole day. This the yeah, we, those are the people we are nominating to cabinet. Talking matters potential, they are mm. in.
Do you think the National Treasury, now under Prof. Sandungo, should actually be vetted by Parliament and given the green light? Do you think we have the potential to address the of ballooning pending bills issues? You've seen the Nairobi County, what Governor Sakaja is inheriting. You've seen parastatals there in. Kenyans have supplied goods How and services to How do you deal with pending in. bills na inu ukora yote? Kila mtu ni mukora. Do you mean there can be fictitious, fictitious uh, pending bills there in? 90% are just, just hot air. Come on. You know... Uh, I was a member of my county, something, I don't know what they called it, I've forgotten. Mm -hmm. There are so many, like every county, the previous governors of 2017, I didn't need bills. I said, let us pay all these bills, but let us start by doing an audit. Even before government said it, mm -hmm. I said, bring your claim. You build a bridge, let's go and see the bridge. <laughs> Everybody will run away. I said that on TV, and some would... Some three, three, two or three guys came looking for me. They told me, Manyona, you don't understand this country. Do you know there are people who have committed suicide? Do you know there are people whose wives or husbands have divorced them because of this pending beast? I told them, I know. Loans and all that. You don't think I don't know? I know. I know they are genuine businessmen. What I'm saying is an overwhelming number of those pending bills are fictitious. So how do you separate? So... So long as country, so long, so long as country and government is an enterprise for a few people to siphon money, to steal money from the public, nothing will go, nothing will work. Everything you see going on in the government is about people making money. Those spending bills just hot air. In Rutos, as we wind up, in Rutos administration, there in comes the land housing and urban development docket. They are in. We've seen him go robust on his commitment uh, to enhance the affordable housing scheme. We've seen him uh, commit to do so much in Mukuru slums there. In. Those again, those again are, you know, I say. These you know, ambitious tasks that Those are not ambitious. Those are cheap things. Look, Angela Kamavitu Yakibaki Narayla Apakebira. There was so much fuss about that. The same things Kinaruto are saying. Kibira has hundreds of thousands of people. And then you go and do some. Some, one th some 500, 500 houses or 1,000 houses. Even if you, I, I calculated, you're going to keep back in a rail. I calculate, and that's where Ruto is going. I said, even if you gave them 200 years, they can't settle the people of Kibera. You can see that stupidity. A young girl was interviewing me from some UK university. And she said, I, because I've been watching you and listening to you, because you are critical, I'll tell you this. I wouldn't say this to another African. What's wrong with you Africans? What's wrong with you? A, a white girl, a small girl, a student from the UK university. Ask her what is the problem. <laughs> At that time, the feasibility studies for slum upgrading Kibera was a lot of money. But the product also sources. You cannot address housing in that cheap way, they are saying, of affordable housing. You must be creative and imaginative. Government need not even provide anything. What government should provide is free land with the attendant infrastructure development and invite Kenyans to build houses. Within 10 years, Nobody will want a house in Nairobi. There will be more houses than Kenya, and there will be no Kibra, there will be no Kawangware, there will be nothing. But the way they are doing it, even if they were given a thousand years, can they sort out the housing problem in Kenya? They are going to the same timelines, at least 500,000 units. Which one? Which is this 500,000 units? Why can't they invite me and tell them how to do it? You don't do it that stupid way. If you want houses in Nairobi, you avail land. And when you are looking for land, you must be brave and bite the bullet. You say, this forest, for example, from prisons in Langata, Kibra, the Kibra, Ngong Road, you see Kibra, Southern Bypass, all the way to those houses that were grabbed during a lot of those time around Langata, which some minister wanted to return, but then people made noise, kidogo, kidogo, wakawachiwa. You know those noises on Southern Bypass? That forest extending to around Ngong there. What you are seeing on the road is covering your eyes that there are trees. People have, when crotch the trees, they have a lot of logging. There are no trees there. Bite the bullet and 
create a housing scheme there. So the government is availing serious land for people to build houses. Very fine, that is one. And I have to tell you this thing because you are an economist. A country can only be talking about affordable housing when people are planting pineapples in the town. Give them land to plant pineapples, not Del Monte in town. You are planting trees in town. And you say you are telling about housing, squeezing a few things in Kurugwanji. That is, that is cheap thinking. You need big thinking. Very finally, you are talking matters provision of land. There are Kenyans who are sitting back at their home with money. They want to get into housing. But they are in. We have agencies in government that are to look at matters digitization of the land registry and all that. And ensuring Kenyans are being sold. Lands which have proper titles, they are in. So many fraudulent companies in the name of real estate development and investment companies, they are in. For these particular Kenyans, this time around, under the lands digit, I mean, I mean lands uh, ministry in partnership with the housing ministry, how best can they address such bottlenecks? What I said solves all the problem. No municipality in the world, what is name, has land for sale. There should be no land in Nairobi for sale. That's why a house in New York is relatively cheaper than a house in Nairobi. If London people are selling land, mm -hmm. you can't afford a house there. No land should be sold in, in Nairobi. And therefore all these stupid maguta, 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 all of them will disappear. In real all the all fake that. dealings in the land region will disappear. Because there's no land for sale. Even if you forge it, who are you going to sell to? I see. In other words, mm -hmm. government... Prov allocates land for development, mm -hmm. approved developments, then you are given land. If you don't develop according to the plans you are given, mm -hmm. you don't sell it to somebody. It comes back to the allocating authority mm -hmm. to allocate to another Kenyan. I see. And all those people with the title deeds of land, mm -hmm. Kitenge, Langong, Nairobi, where? Idle. You know how many idle spaces there are? As you say, we are looking for land. People have idols. They are holding those things for speculation. Unaambia unajenga hili tunakupa 18 months tunakuja kuchukua for free. Na hakuna kuzia mtu. Then you kwa yote ya rejis una disappear. Then there will be more houses in Nairobi than you need. I see. No more maguta maguta. Maguta maguta these are con men. Well, that point by Haman Manyora takes us to the wrap of this conversation today, talking matters, crucial dockets in Ruto's administration that continue to experience a number of bottlenecks therein. And he has just given us some of the recommendations on how best we can address such bottlenecks to make sure that every Kenyan not just receives some average kind of welfare, but benefits the most out of their taxes and also to make it a better place for the next generation of Kenyans. Time now for fun of the week. It is none other than this gentleman working at the UN in Gigiri, Dominic Njue. Dominic Njue, thank you very much for being part of the family. Mm -hmm. We really appreciate I see. you being with us. For the many diplomats at Gigiri, they should tune in. Tune in. Mm -hmm. Have a conversation with us. Mm -hmm. If you hear us say something where we maybe don't understand or we can benefit from international experience, mm -hmm. share with us. This is about Kenya. It's not about us. Kenya and the world. Yeah. All right. Until next time on Business Glide, thank you so much for tuning in. Up next on your screen is the Business Glide African Proverb of the Day. <music>